lot of work with CUDA and NTLM crashing or uh, NTLM cracking. Um, it won't take a list like this, so uh, use the cut command and remove the LM hashes and the usernames, and uh, that'll just give us a nice list of uh, NTLM hashes that we can upload to uh, you know a server like mine or or, uh, or crack locally or whatever. Just show you the file there. So there's our nice oops. Anyway, that was a really nice list of NTLM hashes if you would have seen it. So uh, uh, here's running some of the included scripts. If you want to find where the scripts are, they're in the pen test exploit framework three scripts interpreter directory. I will say that occasionally some of them are broken. Um, they're not kept up quite as quick as the Metasploit development is. So if you find one that's broken, uh, you got a couple options. You can use another one. You can complain to Carlos, or you can fix it yourself. <laughs> So this is just me using our good old MS068 or MS0867 exploit. It always works. Um, Got to get our UID. As you can see, this time I've exploited on the level of the system user. Um, first thing you always want to run is to check VM. So this is going to show us that it's a virtual machine. Uh, run get countermeasures is going to tell us the status of the Windows firewall on the system. We can tell that our firewall is enabled at this point. That could be interesting information for later usage. Um, this next script is going to be called get local subnets. This could actually be done with the IP config command, but if there were more subnets, it would actually show them here, and I would be um, inclined to do a pivot. Uh, run kill AV um, will kill about 95% of antiviruses on the target. I, I have noticed that it won't kill Microsoft Security Essentials. The next, uh, let me pull on. The next uh, script is a little bit more in depth. Some of the scripts have a help command, so you can give them the dash H in case you want to see the commands. Um, I'm going to do this two different, way, different ways with remote desktop and with Telnet. They both have about the same options. Um, the reason I want to show this is because you can run the get GUI script and what it will do is um, turn on remote desktop, add a port and firewall and that type of thing for, on the victim computer. But um, the, the, reason, the reason that it can be tricky is because unless you crack a hash and you know the current username and password, you'll have to actually create a new user and password, which is really cool that it does that, but it's also um, really not cool when the system admin of the victim machine sees a new user on the box. So um, in the first example, I'm just going to do it. I already, of course, know the username and password. Um, so I'm going to show it done that way with not creating a user. So in that case, I would just use the E option and enable, or enable RDP only. Um, so as you can see, um, it was already enabled. But if it wasn't enabled, um, it would say enabled, and it also opens a port in the local firewall. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use our desktop, and I'm going to connect on over there. And uh, there we go. i got a remote desktop session, and I'm actually logging in as the current user. This is another place the idle time command comes in handy. I know that the guy's been away. If it's noon and he's been away for 33 minutes, I've probably got 28 more before he's coming back. So as you can see, i got a remote desktop session that way. And I did not have to add a user to the system, which is um, important. But I'm also going to show, um, there's the exact same script, get telnet. So I'm going to show that. And uh, during the get telnet, I'm going to add a user and a password. See the help commands are generally about the same. But at this point, I'm going to give it the dash U and the, and the dash P for a username and password. We'll use the old root tour. Can't believe it's hard to not like that. <laughs> That's pretty neat. That skill. Uh, man, I had no video at all, sorry. <laughs> I did not pray to the live demo guys this morning. EA, EA, completely photography. So, I am going to do a live demo of uh, Metasploit Express at the end, hopefully. <laughs> anyway, so you see I tell that in, use my login that I created, 
Something that's cool about the scripts is it automatically adds me to the administrator group, which is right where I want to be to publish some topic. So that's that script. Really useful. That script is even more useful on newer systems where Telnet is not enabled by default. This script is called a persistence. This creates a persistent backdoor. And what it does is it uploads the backdoor and then it immediately connects a reverse shell session back to your back to your computer. Um, it also adds entries to the registry so that it will um, be there on reboot. So that's what I'm going to show. See how it added the registry entries to auto run when it restarts. So then I'm going to reboot the Windows system right here. Uh, well, first I'm going to background this. First I'm going to start my handler. Anytime you have a reverse shell, you got to start a handler to accept the connection. There's my second shell. It's already come. But what I'm really interested in is that shell being there when I reboot the machine. One, one caveat this though is it does not clean itself up. Correct. So it does not clean itself up. So you would manually have to go into the registry after you are finished and delete those delete those entries. Um, here's oh, wait a minute. Here's my favorite script before it runs. It's almost just like the scraper script, except for I think it gathers a little bit more information. Um, it's called the Win Enum script, and what it does is it runs all those uh, really tedious net sh commands that are um, really hard to remember on a Windows box, and it saves them all really nicely in a directory, kind of like the one Adrian showed. It's similar. I haven't determined which one has the best information yet. See how it gets all my subnets, gets all my routes, gets all my net stat information, net accounts. It always hangs here for some reason. Domains, administrator groups, firewall config, task list. This is just an absolute goldmine of information, especially if you need to further infiltrate the system. And, uh, and given, uh, given somebody on a penetration test this much information will make their jaw drop, I promise. All right, so just to show the information, we're just going to go over here. The, they'll be located in the .nsf3, whatever uh, user you're running as, logs, we need them. So I'm just going to show you what some of the text files look like. There's a bunch of them. Um, some of the more interesting ones are startup programs. I'll show you why um, when we inject an exe here in a few minutes. Um, Injecting an EXE in a startup program is always good, since you know the back door will be there. It has the hash down, of course. <coughs> Programs list. As you can see, we got SQL server running. That's always interesting information. Here's the startup list. So now I can look at one of these programs, and, uh, and I can look at something to inject my EXE into. All right, so... Um, at this point, got this video on creating, encoding, and uploading a interpreter backdoor. If anybody has any questions, just stop me. Um, I think I went through the whole exploit here. Sorry. If anybody doesn't know how to do the MS0867 uh, exploit when they leave here. <laughs> Create a payload, and 
MSF payload, Windows, interpreter, reverse key.